be with you. With you and with your spirit. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, proclaimed by St. John. Glory to you, Christ our Lord. And the Word became flesh, and made his dwelling among us, and we saw his glory, the glory as of the Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. Jesus testified to him and cried out, saying, This was he of whom I said, The one who is coming after me ranks ahead of me, because he existed before me. From his fullness we have all received grace in the place of grace, because while the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. The only Son, God, who is at the Father's side, has revealed Him. Glory to you, Christ our Lord. Dear brothers and sisters and dear children, during the summer times, some families go for uh, camping. And then they will have a tent, which is a temporary residence or just for sleeping for a few days. Or they might rent a house for a few days. And we also see the tent of the circus companies. So also in the Old Testament times, there were tents of Israelites because they were nomads or uh, moving around while they left Egypt and they were wandering in the desert for 40 years until they reached the promised land. So, but God determined where they have to camp and their tents are arranged in a special way so that all the twelve tribes have assigned different directions because in the center was the tabernacle of the Lord and then on the four sides, three each tribes had their own tents. So whenever they wake up in the morning, they can look at the main tent of the Lord where the Lord's presence was present. So that was the tabernacle. And the Israelites were a tabernacle centered community. And even after they settled down in the uh, promised land, they had the tabernacle and later King Solomon built the Jerusalem temple. And at least for the three important feasts, and they also had other feasts like the seven feasts, they, even if they are living far away like in Galilee, they were all coming to the temple uh, for worship. And when the temple was lost uh, because of the Babylonian attack, which of course because of the sin of the Israelites, then they established synagogues in Babylon, and then when they came back, they also had synagogues in Judea and Galilee. And so they were also a synagogue-centered community. In the New Testament times, we are all a church-centered community. Because wherever we settle down, we will have in the midst of our houses, there will be a house of the Lord. Where we come together, we experience the presence of the Lord. The Lord is present in the tabernacle. And also we worship the Lord along with Jesus. We uh, celebrate the sacrifice of the Lord, which is our kurbana. Kurbana means sacrifice. So we attend the Holy Mass. Mass is not the proper word because that is only a gathering of the people. But uh, Kurbana is more meaningful. That is why we use the term Kurbana from the Syriac language, which is a unique sacrifice, the self-sacrifice of our Lord. And so in today's Gospel passage, we read from the Gospel of John, which is a forward or a prologue to his Gospel in the, uh, from chapters 1, verses 1 to 18. So we are reflecting on verses from 14 to 18, which is uh, the conclusion of the introductory passage. So John was a theologian and a visionary. He had a vision of the heaven in the island of Patmos uh, when he was exiled from Ephesus. And also he had a special experience of the Lord in the Mount Tabor when the Lord appeared with the Moses and uh, Isaiah the prophet and in the Garden of Gethsemane, and also he was with Peter and, John, Peter and uh, uh, James, 
and John, those, those three people were present when Jesus raised a child from after death. So he had experienced those kind of special glory of the Lord. And that is why John uh, says that uh, he has seen the glory of the Lord. So he says in the theological terms that the Word, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and God created everything with the Word. That means God said, let there be the heaven and earth, or let there be stars, or the sun. So through the words, God created. And according to John, this word is Jesus Christ that became flesh. But some translators say uh, that the word became a person. Because sometimes the flesh has a negative connotation. That means the flesh leads us to sin. Now, a child is the, uh, the, the love of couples becoming flesh. That means it is the peak of the love of the couple that they have a child and God gives the soul for them. So now, according to John, the Jesus, the Word, the God, tabernacle among the people. That reminds the Israelites of the tabernacle of the Lord among the Israelites when they were in the desert. The Shekinah cloud, which means the glorious presence of God in the form of a cloud, was present in the holy place of the tabernacle. Then, when King Solomon built the temple in uh, Jerusalem, God's this uh, presence, holy presence, uh, was seen, and uh, that was all the time in the holy of holies in the temple of Solomon. Later, when the temple was destroyed by the Babylonians, that presence of the Shekinah cloud was lost. Though Serubabel rebuilt the temple, and King Herod built the temple again uh, with all kinds of manifestation, the Shekinah cloud did not come back. So after centuries, the glory of God came back with the incarnation of Jesus Christ. And Jesus is a visible, a tangible, and accessible presence of God, so people can see Him, hear Him, touch Him. And, however, only some people could recognize Him as the Messiah, whereas the Jewish leaders could not. So John says, we saw His glory, His miracles, His vision in Mount Tabor, and uh, Him sitting at the right hand of God while He was uh, having that vision in the island of Patmos. Then John says that the grace and truth came through Jesus. Law came through Moses, but through Jesus came the perfection of the law, which is the grace and the truth. The grace and is, uh, the meaning of the grace is the divine mercy of Jesus. Just like the prodigal son when he came back to his father, the father unconditionally received him. He did not question him. He did not ridicule him. He did not put any condition on him. He unconditionally received him because he felt that the son he is now repenting. So also when we are, if we are ready to repent, the God is gracious to receive us. That is the grace of God revealed through Jesus Christ. And that was the message of John the Baptist as well as the Jesus Christ because they said, Repent, the kingdom of God is at hand. And so, so also the parents, even if their children make mistakes, they love their children, they try to correct them, but at the same time, they uh, love them, and they receive them, and they forgive them. So, Jesus uh, came to teach the truth, which is God, and the truth that God loves them, even, if, even though they made mistakes, but provided they repent, and then Jesus showed compassion to the people. He, um, he gave healing for many people. He uh, compensated for their sh shortages. And finally, he offered his life as a sacrifice. Instead of sacrificing the lambs, the animals in the temple, he sacrificed himself near the temple in uh, Jerusalem. So no other God has done like Jesus did for humanity. And then John says we received grace after grace. That means from the Old Testament time onwards God has been gracious, forgiving Israelites even though they committed sin 
whenever they repented jesus sent god sent prophets asked them to repent whenever they were repented god gave them again protection because they were his covenant people and the grace again came through jesus and we also have that same grace that we received through the sacrament of reconciliation through the sacrament of holy mass the eucharist or kurbana we are partaking in that grace of god through jesus christ and then john says jesus is the truth and what is the truth truth is the secrets of god uh, we know that the first parents to the first parents god told the truth that they can eat from any of the trees or plants in the garden of whereas they have to abstain from eating from the uh, two trees but satan tempted the eve to eat from the forbidden plants and so satan told the told the lie whereas god told the truth but unfortunately he followed the lie and we also have a tendency to believe the lie to propagate the lie even using social media or through our phone calls or personal conversations so we have to always listen to the word of god and follow the truth we do not know the secrets of other people and we are not able to judge others so the truth is that god loves us the truth is that we have to follow the commandment of the lord by loving others and serving others then jesus says then john says that jesus uh, existed before him and he ranks ahead of him whereas we know that john was 6 months older than jesus christ but john says he existed before me because according to john the evangelist the word of god was with the father all the time from eternity and now he became a human person after 6 months after the birth of uh, john the baptist and so jesus is a unique son of god he says he is the only son from the father who only knows the truth only he has seen the father because jo abraham talked to god though moses spoke to god though many of the prophets spoke to god they never saw god because nobody can see god in this world but through jesus christ we can see god because he take took the form of a human person but we all can see god after our death especially after the second coming of christ the god jesus will present us to god the father provided we keep the commandment of the lord so the command the message of the today's gospel is that we the church is a dwelling place of god where we come together this is this is the meeting place of god and his people and so jesus christ presides over the holy eucharist it is not the priest that is why we have the uh, special vestments representing that it is not the human person of the priest but it is priest is representing the jesus christ who is offering the mass for us and so god is present in this tent and in the tabernacle and in the word of god and we listen to jesus through the word of god through the preaching and also we experience him by receiving the holy eucharist so we have to see the glory of god as john and the other apostles experience the glory of god because god is giving us so much protection god is providing everything we need in this universe this universe is so complicated that the scientists throughout the centuries have done so much research but they could not find all the secrets of this world and so we have to appreciate the great providence of god and the glory of god and the grace of god that he has given us and we will also experience in full way uh, the glory of god the grace of god at the second coming of christ and so we have to realize that how big is our house our house in this world is only temporary so if you die in a hospital we do not go back to our house but we have we will be put in a coffin and buried in the cemetery however we have a dwelling place in heaven and jesus said that i am going to my father to prepare a dwelling for you and that is a permanent dwelling place so we are all have living in a tent in a temporary dwelling place in this world and with that conscience we are understanding 
that we have to love God and serve God's people. We have to follow the directives of our garden angel rather than the Satan or people who are influenced by the Satan to uh, tell us the lies. So let us keep the uh, commandment of God so that we experience the grace of God in our lives.